Today, we'll be looking at why your photo composites might suck and how you can fix them. Part 2. I'm Abby Esparza with PhotoManipulation.com, and if you like what you see, go ahead and show us with a like, and if you're new here, why not subscribe? We put out five new videos every week. Now let's take a look at what we have here. Welcome to my part two of why your composites suck, but actually they don't. Check out part one down in the description. And just like before, we are just going to have a little chat and uh, some blending going on in the background. Let's start with a classic. You aren't flipping your canvas horizontally. I'm sure you've seen it before. You're watching a random speed edit or watching a live stream and you notice that every once in a while, the artist will flip the canvas horizontally. It's because flipping your canvas effectively gives you a pair of fresh eyes. After a period of time, your eyes become used to what they are seeing. Used to both the good and the bad. And the bad starts looking less and less bad the more you get used to it. But that flip of the canvas brings out all those pesky perspective, lighting, and other common pitfall issues uh, right to the surface. It's the same sensation when it comes to hearing your voice recorded for the first time. You are used to what your voice sounds like coming from your own mouth. Hearing it differently feels wrong. But unlike your voice, the mistakes that flipping your canvas brings out are indeed mistakes that probably need fixing. Flipping your canvas every once in a while will help these mistakes from piling up, but be careful not to flip too much or the effect will essentially wear off. And assuming time is on your side, try to avoid looking at an image for a longish period of time. Even just a couple of days or <laughs> a couple of minutes can help refresh your brain and clear some of that fog that builds up after hours of working on the same piece. This one is a bit of a no-brainer, but create images in high resolution, the highest resolution your computer can muster. And of course, the highest resolution stock images your budget can manage. Even if you're only creating for the web and you know this thing is never gonna see print, bigger is always better. Sizing down is always preferred to sizing up. This goes for both the final image as well as the individual elements used in the composite. Sizing up causes a whole swath of issues from pixelation and blurriness to lack of details that are able to be added. So just say no to Google search and Wikipedia. Not only because there is no guarantee should you be even using them from a legal standpoint, but they are going to be low res and compressed multiple times more likely than not, causing image artifacts, pixelation, blurriness, and even color degradation. Blow that up to three times its original size and you have a big old pile of <laughs> digital poop. Yeah, that's the word we're gonna go with. Combine high resolution stock images with non-destructive editing and you'll instantly up your photo compositing game. I have a whole tutorial on how to enlarge things without actually enlarging them. And I'll have a link to that down in the description as well as a quick rundown of Smart Objects, one of my favorite non-destructive editing tools.
Coming up in the number three spot, not that it matters as these aren't listed in any particular order, uh, we have don't use repetitive elements. It's a huge pitfall with photo composites and something I see all the time. Taking the same fire overlay and placing it multiple spots in the same image. Or even using the same image over and over in different composites. I have one steadfast rule, I don't use the same model twice. As far as textures, overlays, and other smaller elements like fire or greenery, I make sure to first edit them as I place them, and second, I have a large library containing dozens of different variations of those same elements. That way, if I use a specific rock in an image, I have 20 more to choose from. Um, I don't have to repeatedly use that same rock over and over, which will stick out like a sore thumb. If you must use the same element twice, make sure to flip both horizontally and vertically if you can, angle it differently, and mask out sections to shape it differently. You can also use the clone tool to clone out certain repeating details like highlights or textures. If it's something like fire or water, try shaping it differently using the different warp tools. Nature may love symmetry, but that doesn't mean you can copy and paste these same two flowers all over the place. Let's talk about a little thing called deliberate practice. As an artist, we need to learn, which means we need to practice. But if you sit down at your computer, open up a fresh new canvas and start going, uh, what are you going to do? You're going to do the things you enjoy the most, and the things we enjoy doing the most tend to be the stuff we're already good at. Purposeful practice isn't just about sitting down and doing, it's about setting intent behind the time you're going to take to practice. What do you intend to accomplish in this session, and how are you going to accomplish it? What is your goal, and what is your focus? Improvement isn't just determined by the number of hours you spend doing something, but instead the quality of that practice. You can do that same thing 50 times, but if you do it the same way 50 times, making the same mistakes 50 times, then you mostly just have 50 pointless things. So ask yourself, what are you going to do and what is this session of practice going to do for you? What are you going to leave with that you didn't have before? Or how much closer are you to a skill you didn't have before? Learn your fundamentals, learn art theory, stop doodling. Fundamentals are called fundamentals for a reason. They are consistent throughout most art forms. Color, composition, value, form, brushwork, and perspective are all fundamentals that are generally universal across all of the different mediums, including creative compositing, mixed media, uh, photo manipulation, all of the fancy names the same thing has. Learning the fundamentals will help you become a well-rounded artist. So while you'll have a hard time finding the fundamentals in direct relation to creative compositing, the fundamentals that apply to both photography and digital painting apply to creative compositing as well. So the stronger your practice and fundamentals, the stronger your art will be. Learn the boring stuff and practice deliberately.
Finally, this one is short, sweet, and it's something that was told to me years ago. Call yourself an artist. Do you make art? Then you're an artist. You may hate it or don't feel like you're one uh, because you're not good enough, but you are one. You may be a bad one, um, or more likely than not, just a great one in the making. But you are an artist. And unfortunately, we will be artists till the day we die. So just embrace it. And remember, you don't suck. I think that about does it for today, so like if you like, subscribe if you really like, and let me know what you'd like to see next. Or just say hey down in the comments. And don't worry, I think this is the end of my You Suck series. <laughs> I'm Abby Esparza with PhotoManipulation.com, see you next time.